So grid scale energy storage is far more important today than ever before. And why is that? Because majority of the countries wants to integrate more and more renewable energy into their power grids. India, for example, has set a target for 500 gigawatt of renewable integration by 2030. In the same way, many of the countries, United States, UK, European Union, have, they have set the binding targets for renewable energy integration. By the end of 2023, more than 170 countries have established the renewable energy integration targets. More and more country wants to integrate renewable energy sources like solar, wind and other renewable sources. They want, to more, uh, they want more dependency on the renewable energy generation than the conventional energy generation. But you cannot have a reliable power grid without the storage only with the renewable energy. Why is that? The reason is very obvious. Renewable power doesn't always produce electricity when needed. The sun doesn't shine at the night and the wind doesn't blow all the times. So when you want renewable energy uh, to supply the power, you may not have the sun, right? And that's a problem. And the energy storage can solve that problem. And that is the reason why the energy storage is becoming paramount importance today than ever before. And in this video, we are going to talk about the different energy storage solutions that are available today. We'll just have the overview of those technology. So the idea of energy storage is simple. So when the output of renewable energy is more, we store that energy into some kind of storage form. And when the sun goes down or wind is not blowing, uh, we send out that output back to the grid. So we are creating a balance basically. And with this, uh, definitely we can have dependency on renewable energy storage. And if you look at the different types of energy storage that are available today, we have pumped hydro storage, we have flywheel storage, thermal energy storage, hydrogen energy storage, and the battery energy storage system. Now, among all these storage options, the battery energy storage is the fastest growing energy storage technology today. Why is that? You will understand when we talk about that because it offers a lot of advantages uh, than the other available solutions. And by the way, if you want to learn in detail about battery energy storage and if you want to have a structured learning and want to master the bus in the easiest way, then definitely you need to check out my course on that. You'll get a structured learning uh, about the bus in that course. You'll get link for it down in the description. You can go and check it out. So first, let's start with the pumped hydro storage technology. It's the very widely used and mature technology of storing uh, the electricity not actually electricity but the water and then the water helps us get the electricity so what we are doing is we are pumping uh, the water from the lower reservoir to the upper reservoir using the pump so this is done when the electricity generation is high now the stored water is then released back and uh, which rotates the turbine and then the electricity is generated right so this is the simple methodology it's used for many years it's proven and mature technology it certainly offers a very good advantages like uh, uh, it has large storage capacities. You can store a uh, huge amount of waters in the upper reservoir and thereby you can get uh, electricity generated. The more water you store, uh, the more electricity you can generate. Then it has a long lifespan. So once it is built, it's going to last you for 50, 60 years or even more than that. So uh, we don't have any problem of degradation or, you know, uh, any life uh, reduction uh, because of external factors and it's also proven technology as I said this is uh, you know one of the matured energy storage technology that we have today it's working well and it's doing perfectly fine but there are certain limitations and those are major limitations of uh, pumped hydro storage well the first is you need specific geography of course uh, you need to build dams you need to have river uh, somewhere near you need to have huge water supplies so you cannot build this into a city right you need to have that specific geography where all this requirement of pumped hydro can be met so uh, definitely in the deployment of this we have the biggest roadblock and that is dependency of the location one of the major problem uh, of course you need huge upfront investment you have to build dams there are a lot of equipments a huge civil work into this so you will have to put a lot of money in advance before you start getting in the returns 
so those are the two critical uh, drawbacks disadvantages of uh, the pumped hydro storage but as i said it's a proven technology it's working you will find a lot of actual projects about pumped hydro one of the uh, similar project you will find tehri hydro uh, station in uttarakhand india it's running and it's per working perfectly fine giving a lot of amount of storage of electricity then moving on let's talk about the flywheel storage now this is a very unique kind of storage technology you can say when the electricity high is high uh, that is stored in the rotor and when we want electricity that rotor is rotated and that kinetic energy is converted back into the electricity the biggest advantage of this technology is they are quick and very very efficient if you need a quicker response to some of the changes that is happening in the grid for example the frequency control or a sudden drop or uh, uh, the electricity is gone uh, this can become uh, useful because their response time is very very quick so as i said fast response time is one of the biggest advantage of this flywheel storage we have higher efficiency there is no major losses that happens within the storage capacity and of course they have uh, the long cycle life as well but uh, the problem is you cannot store electricity for longer time right it can serve you for few minutes to few hours but nothing more than that so that is uh, one of the limitation of flywheel storage even though it has faster response high efficiency uh, but you cannot store huge amount of electricity there uh, one of the example is this stephen town flywheel plant in new york usa which is helping in storing electricity for shorter time um, and uh, dispatch it to the grid now uh, please note it really doesn't mean that even if it's available for shorter duration it cannot be used definitely it can be used because in storage we have two different types of uh, technologies one for the short duration storage another one for long duration storage both has its own application we discussed about that uh, in the best course that we have so for short duration storage flywheel storage option is one of the good option now moving on uh, we have thermal uh, energy storage so in thermal energy storage we use excess amount of electricity to store uh, in the form of heat or cold one of the popular method is the molten salts method which is used to store the electricity as heat during the daytime and then it is released back uh, into the grid during the night time the advantage of this technology it's cost effective because it works really well with uh, the existing solar power plant so you can take full advantage of that but again uh, the problem is just like the pumped hydro storage this is also location specific and uh, you cannot build it whenever you wherever you want so that is one of the limitation and of course it's less uh, flexible again dependency is on uh, the sun for example and uh, there is it's, it's not flexible compared to uh, the other available technologies that we have moving on to another emerging technology and that is the hydrogen energy storage now in this technology what we are doing is we are uh, splitting the hydrogen and oxygen from the water using the electrolysis and then the hydrogen is stored and when we want the electricity that hydrogen is being used to uh, get the electricity uh, using the fuel cells or the turbines the biggest advantage they offer is the long term storage you can store electricity or you can store hydrogen for days weeks or even months so whenever we have seasonal things like for example for one particular season only the sun comes out we can store that energy into this and then when in the winter or in the monsoon we can dispatch that for the complete uh, season so those that is the biggest advantage this hydrogen energy storage offers uh, but the problem is this is still new okay and uh, you don't have a lot of projects running out for this Uh, it's still under development uh, it's not yet fully matured and conversion of the hydrogen uh, water into hydrogen is still not uh, very efficient so those are some of the limitations but there are some pilots project running for example in india gujarat uh, one of the pilot project is uh, done by uh, the adani so there are some projects which are still uh, utilizing this technology learning about it and as the technology matures uh, definitely it will also scale right then moving on uh, to the most talked subject the battery energy storage system or bas now bas or the battery energy storage system is the fastest growing 
energy storage technology today the reason is very simple the enormous amount of advantage it offers compared to the other available technology so what we are doing here is we are using batteries as the storage uh, unit we are storing electricity in the batteries and we are releasing it back to the grid when we want uh, of course it's not just the batteries charging and discharging there is a lot of things going on inside so we can say it's a power plant packed inside a compact container right and we we discussed about every part of it uh, what is batteries uh, the energy management system the battery management system and everything the complete architecture uh, we discussed in uh, the battery energy storage course that uh, i have created you can check that out now uh, as i said this is one of the fastest growing technology and everybody wants it the utility wants it uh, the epc contractor wants it the private customer wants it uh, why is that let's let's understand what advantage it offers the first one is the flexibility in location we saw uh, the pumped hydro the thermal storage needs a specific location you cannot have it anywhere but that's not the case with battery storage you can have the battery storage in the city you can have it outside the city you can have it in the desert you can have it in the cold atmosphere uh, it really doesn't impact the storage so that is the great flexibility offered by the battery storage additionally it is scalable and modular if since it's a containerized combination if you want more storage you simply add more containers to the your existing unit and you have added uh, the additional storage capacity so that scalability is there that's not the case with other things if you have built a pumped hydro uh, it's not easy to add uh, neighbor units to that to add the capacity so uh, that limitation is addressed in the battery storage then the battery storage has the faster response time so it can be used for both it can be used for short duration storage and also for the long duration storage one of the you know the ideal project of battery storage is the hansdell power reserve in south australia and it is reported that uh, that battery storage can respond within 140 milliseconds so if something goes wrong you want output of battery energy storage the output will be made available to the grid within 140 milliseconds it's really really fast and this is what we need uh, when we have applications like frequency control frequency support or voltage balancing so this fast response time comes uh, very handy and very important in such scenarios then it has higher efficiency compared to other technologies that we see uh, but it depends on what kind of battery technology that you are using if you are using lithium ion the efficiency could be 80 85% lead acid it is lower and uh, it will vary based on uh, the uh, technology battery chemistries that you are using plus uh, because of uh, the growing electric vehicle market the battery cost is falling down so reportedly we have seen lithium ions cost has gone down by 70% in last 10 years and it is expected to go down further because the production is increasing day by day so that falling cost will add to uh, the benefits of uh, the battery storage also it can be used for versatile application as i said you can use it for the long term storage you can use it for the short term storage uh, you can use it for peak shaving you can use it for capacity firming frequency regulation even the reactive power control can be done using uh, the battery storage and you go back to the other available technology you will find very limited technology or almost no technology which can offer everything that we talked about just now so this versatile application is provided only by the battery energy storage and that is the reason why everybody is talking about the bus everyone wants the bus it's not only the demand of uh, the actual technology but it's also the demand of people who understand bus and that's the very reason why we created the course on battery energy storage you get a structured way of learning that in a very easy way you'll get link for it down in the description you can go and check it out so that was the overview of different grid scale energy storage technology that we have today we talked about the pumped hydro which is location specific but it's proven technology and can give you a huge amount of storage we talked about the flywheel storage which is very good for uh, you know short term storage and quick response we talked about thermal storage uh, which works pretty well with the solar plant but uh, it's location specific again 
then we talked about the upcoming technology hydrogen storage uh, which can store electricity for a very long duration up to months but it's still under development and uh, needs maturity before it's uh, deployed full scale and then we talked about the battery energy storage system which is the fastest growing technology today which offers a lot of application versatile use case flexibility modularity and a lot of other benefits i hope uh, this video helped you to get a, a different overview of the different storage technology that is available today thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one but till then keep watching keep learning <music>